Welcome to the Blackrock Spire in-depth dungeon guide for both Horde and Alliance. Blackrock Spire has two wings. The upper of the two require 10 players. In this video I'll only cover the lower wing, which can be completed as a party of 5. But fear not, the upper wing will be covered soon. Per usual, the timestamps for each faction's quests, the bosses and loot, as well as any other information can be found in the comments below. Stick around till the end of the video, or just skip ahead to find out how to participate in my classic giveaway as a thank you for your support. Lore-wise, Blackrock Spire is one of the most important places in the Warcraft universe. Once the capital of the Orcish Horde, in the Blackrock Mountain, the Spire was brought down by the forces of the Alliance. The surviving Orcs, after recollecting their forces, would come under control of the Black Dragon Nefarian. Unfortunately, Ragnaros and Nefarian didn't see eye to eye, so the last of the Old Horde was once again drawn into war. Without Blackrock Spire, the events of Warcraft 3 and the development of Thrall's story would have never existed. Blackrock Spire can be a bit confusing, so I'll do my best to map out the location of each boss. Although maps won't be present in Classic, I'll provide you with some kind of linearity on where you should be going. Many blacksmiths should expect to make their way through the spire as many necessary recipes, quests, and items can be picked up here to advance your blacksmithing. The recommended levels are 56 to 60, but you can enter as early as level 45, if you so desire. Lower Blackrock Spire is the first time I can recommend a paladin as the main tank. They bring the best area of effect control here, but warriors and druids will do just fine. Any healer will work, and any combination of DPS is also appropriate, as long as you bring someone who can off-heal, as well as a mage, as their crowd control and area of effect is a necessity here. You'll want to free up about 1 or 2 hours, but expect much longer if you don't have someone who takes charge. What do you need? Strength. Let's jump straight into our horde quests. All three of our quests can be picked up in Kargoth, the first being Operative Bijou picked up from Luxlort in the Guard Tower. Luxlort wants us to track down Bijou inside of Blackrock Spire and bring her back alive. Upon finding Bijou in the instance, she tasks us with finding her belongings in the lower portions of Hordemar. After retrieving her belongings, return to her and she'll give you the final part of the chain, Bijou's Reconnaissance Report, which just sends you back to Luxlort and rewards you with some fairly useless items. Up in the guard tower next to Luxlort, we can pick up the Pack Mistress from Galamav the Marksman. Galamav simply wants us to delve into the Spire and slay the Warg Matron, Halicon. Once slain, return to Galamev and collect your rewards. Our final horde quest begins from the command board and is required for the Anixia attunement. Warlord's command will task us with collecting documents randomly found near each of the three mobs required to complete the quest, the first of which being Warmaster Voon, a forest troll found here. Next, we'll need to slay the leader of the ogres found here. And lastly, we'll need to defeat Overlord Wormthalock found here. Our first alliance quest begins from Helendis Riverhorn in Morgan's Vigil. Riverhorn will give us Put Her Down, which will simply require us to kill Helicon, just like the Horde quest. Upon bringing the Warg Death, return to Riverhorn. The remainder of our alliance quests begin within the dungeon, starting off with Bijou, who will give us Bijou's belongings, tasking us with finding her belongings in the lower levels of Hordemar. Once found, return to her and she'll give us message to Maxwell, which simply sends us to Marshal Maxwell in Morgan's Vigil. Maxwell will give us the final quest in the chain, Maxwell's Mission. This quest tasks us with slaying the troll, or Master Voon, found here, the ogre, High Lord Omok, found here, and finally the last boss of the Lower Wing, Overlord Wormthalock, found here. The Alliance's final quest is General Dracosath's Command. This quest begins from a letter dropped off the final boss, Overlord Wormthalock, of the Lower Spire. This quest just tasks us with returning the letter to Marshal Maxwell, and will open up a quest leading to the Upper Spire. Technically, the Alliance have one more quest, but I find it much easier to complete during the Upper Blackrock Spire run, thus you'll hear more about it in a separate video. Talk to me. Right back. Starting off our neutral quests, we have Kibler's exotic pets from Kibler in the Flame Crest. Kibler simply tasks us with retrieving one of the warg pups found within the dungeon. Once found, cage it, and you're all set. Also from Kibler, we can pick up N.A.S.T.Y. This quest requires us to collect 15 of the spider eggs found in the many spider dens in the lower wings of the dungeon. 
and just like the other quests, we receive a spiderling pet as a reward. While you're in the flame crest, don't forget to pick up Mother's Milk from Ragged John. Ragged John tasks us with finding Mother Smolderweb, engaging her, and making sure she poisons you. This is where things get a bit complicated. You'll want your party to be patient with you, thus I'd recommend having your heart set to flame crest. This poison isn't something you can just carry around, as on occasion it will root you and every party member around you for 10 seconds. Thus, once you're poisoned, make sure you aren't cleansed and hearth out. Talk to Ragged John and ask him to milk you to complete the quest, then you can head back to the dungeon. Down in the Steamweedle port of Tenaris, we can pick up the final tablets from Prospector Ironboot. This quest is a continuation of the Lost Tablets of Mosharu, thus you'll need to have completed the questline beforehand. Ironboot wants us to head to the troll-infested portion of the spire and collect the final two tablets found here and found here. Make sure you do the follow-up quests as they reward blue items for fairly little work. The remaining two quests can be picked up within the dungeon. Patrolling through the earlier stages of the dungeon, we can come across a friendly trog by the name of Warosh, who will present us with Urok Doomhowl. Reading the scroll, we find out that Warosh was once an ogre who was cursed to his current fate by Urok. To complete this quest, we'll need to find a spear from the beginning orc area and collect it, and then collect Highlord Omok's head. Once combined, we can use them further in the dungeon to summon Urok and slay him. Collect Warosh's mojo and then head back to complete the quest. Before we can pick up our final quest, we'll need to have looted an unadorned seal of ascension dropped from nearly all of the orcs within the dungeon. It's a little difficult to explain exactly where our quest giver Valen is, thus I'll have a clip leading to him at the end of the video. Valen will offer those that find him the quest Seal of Ascension. You'll need to complete this quest if you plan on going into the upper Blackrock Spire in the future. Seal of Ascension requires us to collect three gemstones. Gemstone of Spirestone from High Lord Omok, Gemstone of Smolderthorn from Warmaster Voon, and lastly, Gemstone of Bloodaxe from Overlord Wormthalock. Return to Valen and he'll give you a much more complicated follow-up. For the second part, we'll need to head to the southernmost cave in Duswallow Marsh. There we'll find a dragon named Emberstrife. With your group, you'll need to damage Emberstrife down to about 15%. At this point, you'll want to place down the Unforged Seal of Ascension. Continue damaging Emberstrife to 10%, then stop. At this point, you'll want to use the Mind Control Orb to control him. Use Emberstrife's first ability on the seal found on the floor, and that should craft the key. Kill Emberstrife off, collect the key, and return to Valen to gain access to the upper portion of the Black Rock Spire. There are two profession quests blacksmiths can pick up for the spire. The first being Snakestone of the Shadow Huntress from Killerum in Everlook. All you need to do is kill Shadow Huntress Vashkajin and collect her Snakestone. If you're a blacksmith, I'd highly recommend doing this quest as it rewards a whopping 14,000 experience. Our second blacksmithing quest starts from the human remains found in Hordmar. All you have to do for this one is head to the blacksmith of Everlook, Malefis Darkhammer, and return the gauntlet to him. Before I get into our bosses, on your way in, make sure you pick up a roughshod pike found against the wall near the last of the Scarshield orcs. We'll need the pike to summon a boss later on in the dungeon. Encountering our first rare is quite interesting. If you really need either of the items the Burning Felguard drops, you'll want to aggro one of the Scarshield Warlocks, let them cast their demonic portals, and just sit there and wait. Occasionally a Burning Felguard will pop up. He's quite easy, but does a bit of area of effect damage with his Thunderclap and Blast Wave. This is by no means a difficult boss, but there are scenarios where you'll have to wait up to 5 minutes waiting for him to pop out of the portal. Furthermore, he can be spawned multiple times if you're interested in his items and are lucky. Our first mini-boss and second rare is the Spirestone Butcher, who can be found patrolling the entryway of the Ogre Wing. The Butcher has absolutely no abilities. He does hit for a decent amount and has fairly decent attack speed, but otherwise this is just a simple tank and spank. In the corner of the first room of Ogres, we see High Lord Omok. Just like the Butcher, Omok is another trivial tank and spank. Omok comes with two abilities, Enrage, which increases his attack speed and attack power for a short duration, and Knock Away, which just launches the target back a short distance. As long as you haven't pulled Omok to a cliffside, you should be okay. Otherwise, Omok is quite easy. Make sure someone collects his head so it can be utilized to summon a boss later in the dungeon. On the pile of rubble next to Omok, one of two rares has the chance of spawning. The first being the Spirestone Battlelord. 
In keeping with the theme of ogres being tank and spank, the battle lord also has absolutely no abilities. He's yet another tank and spank. At this point, the room should be cleared, thus all you'll have to worry about is the possibility of one of the other adds at the top of the dirt pile pulling. The battle lord's counterpart is the spire stone lord magus. This may come as a shocker, but the magus actually does have abilities. The Magus' first and most common ability is Arcane Bolt, which will do a hefty arcane damage hit after a cast. Eat the damage, as you'll need to save interrupts for the Magus' polymorph. Furthermore, the Magus can combo Enlarge, which increases his physical damage, and Bloodlust, which will increase his attack speed. This fight is relatively easy, but if you manage to pull additional adds, make sure you focus them down, as the Magus can spread the Bloodlust. Below the Ogre Mound, we can find the domain of the Smolderthorn Trolls. The first boss we can encounter here is Shadow Hunter Vashka Jin. Vashka Jin can be quite difficult if you don't handle her adds. Crowd control and focus them down before moving on to the Shadow Hunter. Vashka Jin comes with two abilities, which can be potentially hazardous to your group. Tanks will want to take her to the corner at the end of the room, while all ranged and healers keep their distance. Vashka Jin's first ability is Curse of Blood, which simply increases physical damage taken to all nearby enemies. If you can, decurse this, as the damage can add up on your tank, especially with her quick attack speed. Vashka Jin's more worrisome spell is Hex, which will morph her enemies within 20 yards into frogs. This is where you should keep your distance. If a healer gets hexed and your tank can't handle the damage, this can end in a disaster. Being hexed doesn't reset aggro here, so the tank will usually keep aggro even through the hex. Otherwise, Vashka Jin is a tank and spank. Keep focused and you'll find success. Further below, we find the leader of the trolls, Warmaster Voon. This fight can be incredibly challenging if your tank does not take control. Voon comes with a throwing weapon, making moving him a bit more difficult than usual. Line of sight him to the corner before his room, and tank him facing the wall, as Voon cleaves quite often. An added benefit to tanking against the wall is that Voon's uppercut will not knock you backwards into any danger. Paladins, as well as casters that manage to grab aggro, be careful of Voon's kick, which will silence you for 5 seconds. Where Voon becomes extremely challenging is when he combos his Mortal Strike, which cuts all healing received in half, and his Snap Kick, which will stun for a short duration. Tanks, use a defensive cooldown when you're affected by the Mortal Strike debuff, and healers will need to do their best to burst heal during this time. This fight shouldn't be too difficult as long as you focus on positioning. Damage dealers can easily focus Foon down, leading your group to victory over the troll wing of the dungeon. Upon entering Hordemar City, any of the orc encampments can have the rare, Banok Grimax, spawn in them. Keeping with the theme of the other rares in the dungeon, Banok has no abilities. He's another tank in Spank, and is incredibly weak at that. However, he does drop the recipe for the Arcanite Reaper, making him fairly desirable for all blacksmiths. Exiting Hordemar, we'll run into Mother Smolderweb's den. Mother Smolderweb is another fight where the tank will have to take control. Although she isn't relatively dangerous, poor positioning can easily wipe the group. Her most dangerous ability is Crystallize, which stuns everyone in front of her for 5 seconds. Face Smolderweb away so that only the tank is disabled by this. If you pull aggro as a DPS, make sure you're spread out to not cause more instances than necessary of the stun. Smolderweb will also summon Spiderlings. The tank should make an active effort to pick these up, as the spiderlings can spell disaster if they run amok while you're stunned. Smolderweb's final ability is Mother's Milk. This should immediately be cleansed if you're not doing the quest. Quite often, this debuff will root you and all party members around you for 10 seconds. Worst off, this can combo. I've been in situations where I've been stuck for half a minute. Get this off of you before you proceed further into the dungeon. Also found in Smolderweb's den, we can encounter the rare Crystal Fang. Yet again, this is another rare that does next to nothing. Crystal Fang has one ability, and that's to summon more spiderlings. Area of effect them down, and this will pose no issue. Besides that, he's an easy tank and spank, with fairly low stats and damage. As such, enjoy your free loot if you encounter him. Proceeding forward, we can once again encounter some ogres. You'll see the summoning area for our next boss, Urok Doomhowl. But before we can commence the summoning, make sure all nearby trash mobs are slain. If you brought the spear from the start of the dungeon, as well as Omok's head, you can toss them onto the summoning pile. Urok is a hard-hitting ogre warrior, with his most common ability being Strike, which is just another hit of bonus physical damage. Healers, focus on keeping the tank up, and don't let them dip too low, as a crit can be disastrous. 
Uruk will also rend, causing minor bleed over time damage. Uruk's final ability, and what makes him dangerous, is Intimidating Roar, fearing the entire party. Normally his attacks will break the tank out of fear, allowing the tank to utilize his cooldowns. The fear lasts 8 seconds, so the tank will need to make an active effort to stay alive, especially if Fear Ward or Tremor Totem is not available to your group. Otherwise, if you can master his fear, he's fairly simple. Coming into the final halls, we can encounter our final orc boss, Quartermaster Zigris, who is highly desirable by blacksmiths. Zigris acts as a hunter. Upon engaging him, he'll usually net you and begin firing upon you. To add on to this, try and stay spread out as he'll throw a stun bomb at party members, stunning them for 5 seconds. He'll usually try and hit the tank with this and flee so he can continue shooting, so keep an eye out for this. Lastly, Zigris will occasionally drink a health potion, healing him for a decent portion of his health. Overall, Zigris may have quite a few abilities, but he's fairly simple. Also, he's one of the first bosses that drops the dungeon set, so that's pretty cool. Moving along, we can encounter... I'm probably butchering this name as I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but... Halicon? Halicion? Anyway, this work is the den mother of all of the Spire Wolves. As such, she's supposed to be some incredible boss, but the reality is there's nothing special about her. Starting the encounter with her will entail fighting her brood. Although this seems overwhelming, any mage can melt through all her warglings. As for Halicon, her only ability is Rend, which just does minor physical damage over time. Otherwise, that's it for this warg. Once Halicon is dead, her mate Gizril the Slavener will spawn in the halls outside. Gizril is a bit more challenging than his counterpart, but is still a fairly easy tank and spank. His first ability is Enrage, which increases his attack speed by 60%. Gizril will combo this with his Infected Bite, which will apply a disease causing minor damage, but also increasing your physical damage taken. Gizril will also use Fatal Bite, causing minor damage and healing him for double that amount. That's it for our works, now we can move on to the final stretch. At last we can face our final rare, Gawk Bashgood. I've had trouble finding consistent information about his abilities, but through testing I found that he's just like the other rares in the dungeon and is a tank and spank. Unfortunately, he doesn't drop any fantastic items like our other rares, but there's always a chance one of his items will be an upgrade for a party member. Finally, we reach the lower reaches and the end of the bottom level of the spire, where we can encounter Nefarian's agent, Overlord Wormthalock. Before I hop into the fight, just know that I can't find any reliable information about Wormthalock online. Thus, all of the information is coming from my own research and playtesting, and may be slightly inaccurate. You want to start things off by having the tank face the wall, like many of the other fights in this dungeon. Wormthalock will punt quite often. This will knock you fairly far back, so make sure you aren't being tossed off his pile of rubble. Wormthalock will also cleave, thus pointing him towards the wall will help lessen the damage received by the other party members. Wormthalock's final castable ability is Demoralizing Shout, which just decreases attack power by those affected, which shouldn't cause you any issues. Be careful, as when you get Wormthalock to 50%, he'll spawn in two guards to his aid. The tank needs to immediately pull these off of the healer, otherwise you'll wipe quickly, as they are both pretty tough elites. I'd recommend either focusing down Wormthalock or one of the guards, depending on how much damage your group is doing. If your tank is geared and has defensives, I'd recommend focusing on Wormthalock. Otherwise, pop cooldowns and utilize your CC to finish up this fight. All in all, Wormthalock is one of the easier final bosses in the many dungeons we've played through so far. Finish him off, and you'll be ready to form your Tedman to clear the upper wing of the dungeon. And that was it. You finished yet another dungeon, and we're getting dangerously close to finishing up the last of our dungeons. My route to Velen will be right after this, so I'll go ahead and talk about the giveaway now. I'll be picking 5 people to receive a free month of WoW time. The requirements to enter are to comment below this video. I'd like your comment to tell me what you'd like to see from my channel, so for example, what kind of tutorials or videos. I'd appreciate it if you're subscribed, but there's honestly no way for me to track that through YouTube anymore. I'll announce the winners of the week classic launches, based on when I release a video around that time. There will be more details in the description if you want to take part in that. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.